Hey, and welcome to the channel. Today I'll be going over a very easy and effective hack to get past the 30 minute live view timeout on the lower end Nikon DSLRs. While I can only confirm this on my camera, the D3300, this should in theory work on any of the models listed below as they all use the MC-DC2 remote release. While this is a straightforward hack, you do this at your own risk. If you break your camera or if it overheats, that's not on me. So essentially what we're going to be making today is this little dongle to trick the camera into thinking the shutter button is half pressed. To make the simpler version of this dongle, all you'll need is an inexpensive shutter release cable, a pair of wire cutters, and some electrical tape. To make the version that will make things easier for yourself in the long run, you also need some solder, a soldering iron, as well as one of these tiny latching switches. I will leave links in the description to all the parts used for this build. So to get started, you're gonna to wanna to chop off the end of the shutter release cable that plugs into the port on the camera. It's a good idea to leave enough length so you have enough room to work with. Also, these cheap cables can be kind of finicky. Actually, on my first go stripping off the outer insulation, I ended up nicking some of the inside wires. Having a little extra cable to work with gave me some wiggle room to try again. Once you have the outer insulation off, you will notice that there are three wires inside. So now we're going to go ahead and strip the insulation off these three tiny wires as well. So once we have all three internal wires stripped, we're going to want to plug the chopped cable into the shutter release port on the side of the camera. Now with the camera in live view, you can see as I half press the shutter button, the tiny photo's remaining number on the bottom right of the screen changes to R4, representing how many photos the camera can take until the buffer fills up. We need to test each combination of wire pairs to see which set gives us the same response as the shutter half press. On the cable that I'm using, we can see that the yellow and white wires give us the desired results. There's barely any voltage here, so don't worry about your fingers or frying anything. So now that we've determined which pair of wires we need, it's a good idea to chop the extra wire off, as the connection between all three wires will fire the shutter. So for the simple version, you're almost done. All you need to do is twist the wires together and add some electrical tape. You can also solder them together for a better connection. So now in the camera settings, navigate to the menu with the wrench, then to the button setting. We're going to make sure that when this dongle is used, that it doesn't engage the autofocus. And we're going to remap the autofocus to the auto exposure slash autofocus lock button on the back of the camera basically decoupling those functions from the shutter button. So the drawback of just doing the simple version without the switch is that you need to unplug the dongle from the camera before entering live view. Otherwise, pressing the live view button won't do anything. This can get tedious and can also wear out the port or the cable. Luckily, the slightly more advanced version I'm about to show you will solve both of these issues. We'll start off by twisting each of the exposed wires a bit so we can fit them into the small holes on the bottom of the switch. Once you have a wire in the hole, bend it gently to hold it into place. Now take your soldering iron and touch it to the metal contact with the switch, heating it while drawing your solder near the wire from the other side to melt it into place. If you want a better soldering tutorial, there are many other videos out there for that. So now we're just repeating the same thing with the other contact and wire. If you're going to use heat shrink instead of electrical tape, Slide the heat shrink on the wire before attaching it to the switch. Now 
So let's give the switch a quick test. We can see that by pressing it down, the tiny R4 on the bottom of the screen appears again. Success. Also notice with the switch depressed that you cannot enter into live view. Unlatch the switch first, press the live view button, and then engage the hack. You can definitely see why having the switch is worth the extra bit of effort. So let's clean up the look of the switch and protect it with some tape. And here's the switch completed. You can now use your camera for streaming or recording out of the HDMI port without having to worry about the 30 minute timeout. A special thanks to user Richard B99 on the DP Review Forum for coming up with this workaround. I will link his post in the video description. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial helps you out. I'm personally using this hack for streaming my live looping performances like this. Here's a couple quick snippets of some upcoming videos. Thanks again.